Hello and uh, welcome back to another Perspectives. I suppose that uh, the, the chat this time is a bit more of a thought experiment and uh, rather than a concrete kind of topic. And because I was thinking about what I mentioned on a previous The Bardo chat and I think on the first Bardo Realm chat I made the statement that to say that it's it's okay to recognize that we don't know everything or don't know a lot actually and it's okay to acknowledge that um, to know that we don't know and to um, not try to cover it up and, um, and that's because unless we can acknowledge to ourselves that we don't know um, really what's going on then we can't even begin to make a first step about trying to decipher at least a portion of meaning of what might be going on in this crazy reality of ours. And I suppose it, it's not our fault at all, because when you think about it, um, when we come into the world, we're fed right from the beginning um, corrupted information. So we're only going to know as much as the information that is provided to us unless we push and make a drive to try to gain access to information beyond the normal information that is provided. So unless we start to ask the bigger questions we're not going to get beyond the smaller answers. So in a way that we are in this information bubble or reality bubble of corrupted information from the womb to the tomb. And straight off after we are you know, having a, a few early infant years to find our feet quite literally, then we're pushed into an education system which has been meticulously established over many years to have to be an environment that really programs and conditions the child with only a limited set of agreed skills to be able to be a useful um, participant into the social structure. And of course the educational system is based on the old industrial workhouses where people will be trained to work on particular machines and in the same way the education programs us uh, mentally and or physically to be able to work on certain machines whether it's physical skills or mental skills to be able to fit into certain machinic routines in life and then of course uh, we're in, we exist, we grow up within a certain con cultural conditioning set and they may include uh, religious, political um, and certain social norms and programming that we embody and which program us according to those circumstances which may differ if, if I had been born in a different area of the world and different social cultural, religious circumstances, then my personality would have been cultivated differently. So we are the product of that information and that's the kind of what we acquire. And, um, and that's why I think I'm going to call this chat hoodwinked because it's a, it's a term which um, hoodwinked means to be deceived and or to be deceived by appearances. So if we can uh, register that we arrive in this world hoodwinked, then that's the first step to try to get ourselves de-hoodwinked, so to speak. But until we can recognize that, then um, it's very difficult to make the first step. But in fact, if we look back into historical sources, then we've been there are sources which have been trying to tell humanity this for centuries um, and even millennia and some of these are called philosophy or wisdom traditions and even um, 
the great philosophy of Plato uh, and the Greek philosophy, they were saying that um, that in the Greek uh, mythology, the before incarnation, the human being drinks from the river of Leth, and that drinking that water erases our memory, and so we arrive in this world, in this incarnation, with a, a memory loss. Our data banks have been wiped, so to speak. So the part of our life is, yes, to acquire skills to enable us to move through this life, but to actually move towards remembrance. So it's not to kind of find everything, knowledge from scratch, but to actually be able to find a way to re-access, to remember that knowledge that we had wiped from us. So we have it all in completeness, but we've erased our remembrance or access to it. So really, uh, the human life is a life in amnesia. And so part of our, let's say, time here is to try to find our way back to remembering something. So, in that sense, what they're saying is that we inherently have that knowledge, but generally we don't access it or even think about it. And many people don't even ask the bigger questions um, because the life, human life, is lived more in uh, acquired information or programming. So, we could say there are two types of knowledge, let's say. One is that knowledge, which I would perhaps call information, that we acquire in our lifetime and which mainly I would say feeds our personality. And then the second type is intuitive knowledge. Knowledge that maybe drives us from an inner urge, um, pushes us and what we come through our instinct, those intuitive insights, and that perhaps is tapping into the knowledge that we had um, originally. And perhaps that knowledge acts upon the human being, the beingness more than the personality. So the more information we acquire from external circumstances and our social, our social environment, it builds upon the personality and it, it builds up our acquired information. But that perhaps takes us away from the intuitive knowledge, which in some part of us, we already carry around with us. And I feel perhaps it's time to speak about this even more in this day and age, because it seems that um, we're moving further and further into this echo chamber of life, what I've also referred to as a Bardo Times. And this echo chamber is that you know, where all this information is, is now because thanks uh, specifically to the, our digital uh, infrastructure, I was, I was going to say digital overlords, um, perhaps it's the same thing, but our digital infrastructure is, is zooming around the information faster and faster and faster. And whatever we call out, and many people are calling out to all the social media, whether they're social media influences or not, but all this is being churned and regurgitated back into the echo chamber. And uh, it's filling up our reality bubble with a lot more noise, which of course cuts out a lot more of the signal. And it, it seems to me that if we want to get away more from the noise, and try to find that access to the, the intuitive knowledge or the knowledge that works in our being rather than the acquired information, we have to push towards a threshold. We have to try to um, pass a threshold. And, um, and that takes a different type of energy, a different type of will, a different type of intention. It's one where it is consciously intended to try to find that threshold, to try to move towards acquiring some type of knowledge. 
Um, now, I think in history, in times past, there were uh, these deliberate means or pathways to reach this threshold where something real could be acquired were perhaps provided through wisdom schools or what were known as initiations or the initiate path, and the, the secret dish, traditions as they talked about, and these schools going way back, you know, way back when, you have them in Pythagoras, you have them in in Babylon, Babylonia, you have them in the Egyptian times, and of course they've always been present, it's just perhaps not so visible these days as the wisdom schools trademarked. Um, and so we don't have those initiate pathways because there these would take a, a lifetime at minimum and it seems now that there's a kind of all this conden con condensing of the time frame the information the rapidity of life the acceleration that things are being fast tracked and perhaps if we can respond to this fast tracking of life in an appropriate way it may help us to actually move towards a threshold quicker as a kind of semi-initiate path in some form but it's a question of how we respond to it um, because obviously um, if there's a lot of noise going on, there's a lot of anger, frustration, anxiety bubbling around. And if we respond to that in, the, in like and like energy, then we are going to be filled with that anxiety and anger and frustration. Um, but it's not going to help us to be pushed towards um, perhaps we need to go. Um, I'm... A couple of weeks ago, I was on a, a quartet discussion, as perhaps you know I do sometimes do these quartet discussions. And the, the question was, um, is the world um, going out of control? My way to respond to that, I mean, generally the response was, yes, the world is going out of control, look around you. But my response was, It depends which world you identify with. If what you see going on around you, all the shenanigans and the, the circus or what I call the theatre of the absurd, if you identify with that and that's your world, then yes, it is getting out of control. But the question is not to identify with it. If that is not your world, if what you see is not what you identify with and not what you want to see in the future, then you can say a particular world is going out of control. The old world, the world that's existed up until these times, more or less, or the last phase of this world, is out of control. But of course, if it's not, you know, that's perhaps necessary to adapt and calibrate to a different type of world. So if we can, if anyone is aligned with a different type of world, then you can say, my world is not out of control, it just hasn't yet come into being. But we need a, a kind of breakdown of the old, obviously, the older world, for the world that I'm going to align with to come in. And that's where you can perceive the possibility of a threshold. Because, as we know, it's through the cracks of what breaks down that brings in the energy of opportunity to what is going forward. So, what going back to the beginning of this little meandering chat as i said it's okay not to really understand everything not to know that we don't know everything it's because a lot of impulses um and a lot of um material and energies are coming into our realm from beyond it and we only are given the tools to understand this realm in an acquired way, in a superficial way. We are given tools to deal with our education, our career, and moving through this world in the program way. They're the tools we're required. But of course, since we don't have those tools for to 
try to understand what's coming in from beyond our realm, then we, we're not aware of it. You know, We're only aware of, as I said, the information we're given. Our knowledge of the cosmos is very limited. You know, if we lived, if we lived uh, centuries ago, our knowledge of the world would that the cosmos didn't really exist, but our planet was the centre of the universe and everything revolved around our planet. So you see, we may laugh at that now, but that was the that was the acquired information at the time. And we are existing right now on the acquired information of our time, which is, you know, there are ABC planets out there, whether they're Alpha Centauri or the Sirius system or, or the Pleiades system. There are some galaxies out there, you know, and they don't really affect us, really, unless you're into astrology, you know. Um, then there we have obviously the sun of our solar system, but the sun gives us light, but doesn't really affect us on other levels, you know. Um, and that's just the acquired information. And unless we push to try to poke our head outside of this uh, threshold, or artificial bubble, then we're not going to really perceive or understand what other forces uh, exist and what other knowledge exists but at this time it's like um just reminding me like that um, famous alchemical drawing i think from the 1600s 17th century of the alchemist poking his head outside the bubble and there's a different cosmos different universe out there different reality and that's how we are now so if we can understand that these times are to push if we can ride the wave, then we've been pushed towards the threshold in a fast-tracked way. But of course, if we want to revolt or resist that to stay in the reality bubble, then we're going to find things even more uncomfortable. Um, so, so in a sense, yes, this reality is uh, one of deceit um, to be hoodwinked, but we're hoodwinked. And it can be in a permanent way or a temporary way. Like um, someone, someone arriving at your doorstep and says, I want to take you to a destination, but I can't show you the way, so I'm going to put this cloak over your head. And then you get, you step out the door and you, put, you have a cloak over your head. But after a few minutes, you get so used to it that you forget you have a cloak over your head. And you think, that's life. And you go around, you go through your whole life from womb to tomb with a cloak over your head because we've forgotten our original state but if we can be nudged um, into remembrance that hey actually I've got this hood over my head I've been hoodwinked then we can make efforts to take the hood off to see what is the bigger picture and to see that there are bigger questions to be asked and bigger answers to be found so the hoodwinked can be a temporary state that we work towards um, solving or we can lapse back into comfort and stay nice and warm under the hood so just some thoughts for this uh, for this time a bit of a meandering kind of thought stream so I'll leave that with you and as always um, keep, our, keep our eyes open and stay grounded cheers